Okay. Good afternoon, YouTube. It is a beautiful pre-summer day here in Beaver, Pennsylvania, and I'm in a beautiful park. I'll give you a 360 here. One of the reasons I love this town so much is the beautiful parks that it has. And it has attained quite a few here in the vicinity, all within walking distance from where I reside. And it's one of the uh, nice advantages I have uh, compared to growing up in Eloquipa, which I now abhor. But I'll save that maybe for another future video. I'm not going to get into that today. I just have a few afternoon rants that I wish to share with you because I haven't been on the line for a while. And I'll explain why at the end of this video. But uh, I have one question. What happened to Kamala Harris? Why has the Democratic Party made her suddenly disappear? You know, it's amazing with the Democratic Party, if you procure just one abstention with their projections and calculations and political objectivity, apparently they threw you under a bus, which is what I think happened to Kamala Harris. She realizes that Biden's a complete and utter disaster. Inflation is the highest, it's one of the highest times it's been in the history of the United States. We don't even have enough baby formula in this country for you young mothers, and I, 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 my heart really goes out to you. He doesn't know what to do about foreign policy. He doesn't know how to handle the gas prices. He doesn't know how to handle the oil prices. He doesn't seem to have a solution for anything. Yet this man got voted in. And instead of concentrating on how bad this country is, the Democrats are giving us all this propaganda about the January 6th riots that occurred in Washington, D.C. when Trump was president. If you are a Trump supporter, you are considered a terrorist. Geez, you know, if the Republican Party said that about Democrats, well, then that would be all over the media. But they silenced Kamala Harris simply because she realizes Biden's a disaster, so they don't have a use for her anymore. It seems when you disagree with something of, of theirs that is what they consider important, then uh, they throw you under a bus. They get rid of you. What happened to diversity? and inclusion. Just 18 months ago, we were worshiping the ground this woman walked on. Everybody, every Democrat in every newspaper was telling you, you should get down on your knees and thank your voters for electing a woman of color for the first time in the history of the United States as vice president. It was big news. Man, everybody was talking about it. You couldn't get away from any newspaper. Washington Post, Compost, as radio host Mark Levin calls it, the Washington Compost, the New York Times, the LA Times, the Boston Globe, pick your newspaper. They were all talking about how wonderful it was for her to be elected. Now all of a sudden they've silenced her. She no longer exists. But I must say this with Kamala Harris, everything that she has, all her reputation, what she has accrued has been done exclusively by dedication and hard work. I may not agree with her policies, most, most of the time I don't. I don't agree with any democratic policies pretty much. But that does not mean I don't recognize dedication and hard work when I see it. And she is a woman of, of example of that. And all you young ladies who watch my videos should take that into consideration regardless of your political party or motives or, or objectivities or whatever, whatever it is that you have decided about candidates when you go to vote for them. It just really surprises me. I'm, I'm quite profound over the matter that she has been silenced by her own party. Now she knows how Trump feels because everybody seems to forget that when he got elected, even the Republican Party didn't support him. In fact, they still can't believe that he actually got elected president. And the Democrats are so scared right now that if he runs in 2024, that's going to be the end of the Democratic Party. They have nobody at this point to even challenge him. So what do they do? They're going to burn him at the stake. They've been wanting to burn him at the stake since the day he got elected, but now they really want to burn him at the stake. And that's what these fallacious hearings are about. If you've watched some of it, it's a bunch of BS. In fact, 90% of it is BS. And these are a bunch of mediocre bureaucrats trying to make themselves look like the most pretentious and aphoristic members of the Democratic Party, the elites who are going after this guy, this Donald Trump. 
people. So we got to get rid of him. We got to get we got to get rid of him. We got to silence him. We never want to hear his name again. And this is pretty much this is what they want to do. But anyway, the next part of this is my view on the Ukraine and war in Russia. The, the Russians and the Ukrainians. I'm constantly hearing how Putin is so compared. Oh, you, you know you. Man, you, you read the Boston Globe and, and the Los Angeles Times, they're, they're comparing Putin to Stalin. Let me tell you something. If Joseph Stalin was in power right now, half of the Ukraine would have been wiped out already. Putin is not even a fourth as cruel and merciless as Joseph Stalin. Putin just has one objective. He wants the old communism back. He's an old communist monster, and he wants to put Russia back on its communist throne. That's what he wants to do. That's his object. And now since Ukraine wants to pull out and doesn't want any part of it, he's going to do exactly what Stalin happened, made happen in the Ukraine. If you read your history and you study a little bit, instead of reading the Los Angeles Times and the New York Times, you will discover that Stalin actually let the Nazis occupy the Ukraine. And what happened during World War II when the Nazis occupied the Ukraine? The Holocaust happened. Over two million Ukrainians starved to death. And Stalin didn't care, and Stalin knew about it, and Stalin let it happen. Is Putin doing anything remotely similar to that? Are millions of people dying in the Ukraine? I'll let you figure it out instead of reading these liberal newspapers all the time. Read some history books instead of watching CNN and reading liberal uh, wipe rags. You need to start reading some books because that's exactly what's happening in Russia right now. This is exactly what happened almost very similar to what happened in World War II. Only the, the only difference is there's no other dictator on the other side that's in power that wants to put a crusade on the whole entire Europe, like Hitler wanted to. Hitler wanted to control the world, not just Europe. But he let the Nazis occupy the Ukraine, and the Ukraine starved to death, basically, is what happened. And Stalin knew that was going to happen, and Stalin let it happen, and Stalin didn't care what was going to happen. So don't tell me that he's even remotely compared to Putin, uh, that he's remotely compared to Stalin, because he's not. He is not remotely, in the least, as cruel as Stalin was. Now, don't misunderstand me. Don't leave stupid comments. I'm not in support of the guy. I'm not in support of what's going on in Ukraine. I'm not supporting the Russian war. I don't, I'm not a supporter of Putin. I'm not a supporter of any communist or socialist. But you must understand that the Ukrainians were communists, too, and that was one of the reasons why the Nazis went after him. They wanted to eradicate communism. They wanted to extinguish it from the map. For some reason, they thought socialism was better. But that's another story. So keep clear perspectives in mind. Please study and read some books. Stay away from fixed news. Stay away from CNN. <laughs> read some stuff, okay? So anyways, I'm glad to see you guys. I'm glad to talk to you again. I had some issues. I was in a hospital for a little while. I had some problems that I had to take care of. I'm out now. I'm better. I'm back, and I'm going to start making videos. And I will see you in the next one. And uh, I hope you enjoy this beautiful afternoon wherever you are. I'm in Pennsylvania. So wherever you're at, stay safe. God bless. See you in the next video.